Hi, I'm Leslie O'Donoghue, and it's a great pleasure to be here on the Online Prosperity Show today with Prosper. And what we're going to be chatting about is everything business and entrepreneurship and talk to you about taking yourself from mindset mess to being your absolute best. I'm going to share a bit of my journey and um, let you know how I went from being a, a mother to a personal trainer running a six-figure business from my garage, uh, award-winning business, and then to a mindset uh, coach and mentor to business women, entrepreneurs, and women in leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Online Prosperity Show, where we dive into the minds and methods of those inspiring figures that are shaping our modern landscape. I'm your host, Prosper Tarubinga, and today we have a phenomenal guest. Now, Leslie, how are you doing today? Hey, Prosper, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Absolutely. For those that are watching right now, I think today's episode promises to be an absolute Gem, we have none other than the dynamic mindset and peak lifestyle specialist. She's already introduced herself at Leslie and she's going to be in the hot seat today. It's a good thing she's even wearing red. So if she gets this on fire, you'll know what exactly is going on. Now get ready to be inspired, informed and maybe even entertained as we uncover Leslie's journey to success. Now, Leslie, I could go on and on and on and talk about your accolades, but it defeats the whole purpose of having you on the show today. Could you tell our viewers, especially those that have been lying under a rock that don't know who you are, what it is that you do and how you stepped onto the scene? Sure thing, Prosper. Well, it's great to be here today and I'm really looking forward to speaking with everyone in the audience and um, giving you a little bit of an insight of my journey of where I came from and how I got to where I am now. So it all started with um, one day I took a walk. I was actually in a place where I was pretty low and um, feeling unfulfilled. I had devoted myself to motherhood and being a wife and, and giving everything to everybody else, but I wasn't giving to myself. And it left me in a place where I was empty and pretty unhappy. And uh, as a result, I decided I need to do something about this. And I decided I needed to just take a walk. <laughs> it was as simple as that, as uh, silly as that may sound. Uh, I needed time for myself. And so I would get up early before the family got up so that I wasn't stealing any family time. That was where my mindset was at at the time. And I would go out and spend time just um, exercising and getting back to nature and just being alone with my thoughts. But it was such a, a positive time and really released some of those endorphins, made me feel good. And really, it just grew from there. So I had these thoughts of going and entering sports competitions and doing triathlons and my mind just went crazy. So... Uh, I ended up gaining a following because it was actually life-changing for me. So I had people asking me, what's changed about you? What, you know, you're looking great. Um, you've got so much energy. You're looking so much happier. What is it that you're doing? And so I told people and I said, why don't you join me? And then one day, uh, one of the new friends that I made said to me, you should become a personal trainer because all of this was about moving your body, feeling better about yourself, and it all stemmed from just doing that little bit of exercise. So that's what I did. I thought, what a brilliant idea. So I became a personal trainer. And once I was qualified, I went and worked for someone else and gained my experience and put my knowledge into place. And I always knew that I wanted to do my own business and run my own show. So I started my own business from the garage in my house. And at the time, my daughters were quite young, so I wanted to be um, near them and available to them while I ran my business. And the business grew. And during that time, um, I ran this six-figure business from my garage. I won a business award. And 15 years later, I transitioned into doing business coaching 
business mentoring, I should say. And I sold my personal training business, who, uh, which I was told was an unsaleable business by a business coach. I decided not to listen to him and I went ahead and once again ran my own race and, um, and then fully stepped into business mentoring. And with the business mentoring, I was helping people to make progress in their business, but I wanted to help them more. So I knew from working with people in the personal training business that the thing that really held people back was their mindset. And I guess the frustration for me was how do I help them to make change, but not just change that lasts for six weeks, eight weeks, um, three months, the length of the program. I wanted to help them to make everlasting change, to take them from where they were which was in a bit of a mindset mess, to where they want to be in life, so to being their best. So from that mindset mess to being their best, bringing out their best. And that's when I decided, I, I looked around at, you know, what's going to help me to help people to do that? And um, I found that coaching seemed to fit the bill. And that's where I saw other people were getting results by doing working with coaches and doing coaching programs. And so that's where I went and got my next set of qualifications. And I, um, I became qualified in a number of different modalities of coaching. And now that's how I help my clients to not only make changes just, um, you know, just while they're doing a program or, um, you know, by running a weekend retreat, where, you know, you can feel really great at the time and think, yes, this is going to make a difference and I'm going to take this with me into my life when I get back home. Um, but I think most people know that that doesn't quite happen. It, it takes more than that. And that's, that's where the, um, you know, the coaching comes into it and giving people the tools and techniques to make change to get to that place where they want to go or on that path to their potential and to keep going. So it's really, it's that journey of evolution. So it's not let's make a change for the short time during the program and then we go back to where we were, back into our old life, stuck on a roundabout that just goes round and round and round but you're not actually going anywhere. So I help people to actually get off that roundabout and to make real change, everlasting change, and take them to the next level. Fantastic. And after that. Absolutely beautiful. And thank you so much for taking us through that whole journey because um, obviously your life story and how you have made yourself is all lived experience, which is absolutely amazing. Now, that walk that you took, all right, you see, because everything else stemmed from the walk there. And I was just thinking to myself, you must have not been traveling a lot, Leslie, because you know what they say in the airplanes? You put your mask on first. Right. Absolutely. Because you were doing everything for everyone and you didn't leave any space for yourself. You know, how did that realization sort of because obviously now I think you 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 already know that now but back then you didn't how did that realization liberate you first of all and give you back the time that you now enjoy well I guess it's it's a bit of a funny thing and I think it's one of the traps of motherhood as well is you know you feel like you have to be everything for your children in order to be that perfect mother and and that was my mistake but I thought that that's how it was done. You know, I wanted to be that perfect mother. I wanted to be everything for my children so that they would have a really great life. And I really thought that that was just, um, I guess, subordinating myself or sacrificing myself to be able to give to them. So, yeah, I really, you're right, I really had the wrong idea. And I didn't get that analogy. I get it now about the mask. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what, I probably, even on the plane, I, that probably um, sounded wrong to me. You know, put your mask on first. It's like, but your children might suffer in the, in the meantime. You must put it on your children. You know, I probably was a bit rebellious against that idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, it, you know, it's just a, a um, you know, not, not the best ideal. But the thing is I know that I'm not alone and I know that um, for mums a lot of them feel the same way or have felt the same way. And they feel guilty if they are to give to themselves or, you know, feel like they're taking time away from their children. But what we don't realise is we're actually modelling the wrong things to to our children. How did I get that? How did I get that, um, you know, paradigm that you have to sacrifice yourself? Where did I learn that from? So Mm -hmm. probably from my own mother. So that's not what we want to pass down to our generations. So we've got a little bit backwards. So we really need to be taking care of ourselves first and then that allows us to shine and for other people to see that. We shine the light for them, whether it's our children, our friends, family, people we don't even know. And then that allows us to be in the best place possible to then be able to reach down and lift them up. So we don't see them drowning and then jump overboard into the water and drown along with them. We stay in the boat and use our intuition and everything that we know and we reach down with all our knowledge and wisdom and we pull them up to be with us. Absolutely, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, you know, so many people and I like the fact that you said a lot of mothers and I think some dads these days, um, they really do just sacrifice themselves, um, you know, to the betterment of the family at the expense of them actually showing up for themselves. And um, I also like the word that you use there. We actually need to be modeling the behavior that we expect, you know, our kids to then be, do and have. Because so many people, you know, are just hoping to be there for the kids, but they're not actually showing the kids what to do because I viscerally believe monkey see, monkey do. But I think you got the message because you started doing sports, right? And obviously that whole um, sportmanship meant there was somewhat of challenge. There was somewhat of winning. There was somewhat of, you know, applying yourself. And did your kids actually see this? I know you became famous with other people as an influencer, but wait, were the kids watching or do you think they were? Yeah, they were. And um, and they were they were very active kids when they were younger. And it was actually quite interesting because it would come out in their play. So mm. when they would play with their friends and they'd have their, you know, make-believe games, they would be, um, you know, walking places or running places, <laughs> which I thought, go you. <laughs> they weren't jumping in cars or you know, jumping on buses or anything. It was, they were, yeah, they were very active. And that was where, you know, that that influence that um, that as a parent, you know, me being active, you know, like you say, monkey see, monkey do, is they don't so much listen to what you say, but they observe what you do. So it's all about your actions. And this is where, you know, taking care of ourselves is so important because the more that we take care of ourselves, the more that our children see that. Um, but not just our, our children, but our, our customers, our clients. When, you know, we if we want to um, influence others, then we need to be the sort of person that they aspire to be or look up to or, um, you know, that role model, not just for children, but for our, um, you know, our our neighbourhood, our society, no, yeah, our community. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I think a lot of people in my street hate me because I'm that one meticulous neighbor who's always got their grass cut nicely. And uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? If every every second week, you know, when the beans are going, I'm that guy with the scissors and then all the neighbors are like, Yeah, see, look, compare. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I see what you're talking about because at the end of the day, so many people don't have role models around them and they look uh, uh, you know, at people around them or in society. And when you step into the scene and start showing them how to be, do and have that sort of uh, existence, you know, they now sort of gravitate to you. And the one question that a lot of people were asking you was, how are you doing this right or you know you know how how are you um actually managing to do this and you ended up starting 
a business in your own sort of garage. Could you maybe walk us through what that transition was like? Okay, because first of all, you didn't have time before, but now you've got time for other people and a business all at the same time. What changed? Well, I guess um, it was, you know, it was just, it was an idea. So I, you know, I had this idea and it was, it was to, to suit me, what I wanted to do, but also to suit the family, to fit in with the family. And, the, you know, the funny thing, well, I guess it didn't feel funny at the time, but I would share my ideas with people. I, I actually remember being on the phone to my mother-in-law and I told her what I was going to do. And, you know, I said, I'm going to become a personal trainer and, um, you know, and this is what I'm going to do and, and sort of stepped her through my plan. And she turned around and she said to me, oh, do you think you'd be good at that? And I, I was sort of taken aback, but I just thought, okay, just let that go. <laughs> but then I also had a really good friend say to me, um, yeah, I once again, I told her the plan of what I was going to do. And she said, don't expect me to be part of it. I don't, you know, I don't want to be any part of it. You're not going to be training me. So once again, it was kind of like another sort of punch in the guts. And then another person who's actually a very close family member also said to me, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want anything to do with it. You know, you go ahead and do it, but, you know, don't expect anything, you know, any help from me. And that was a really big kick in the guts because this person was very close to me. Uh, so I actually had a lot of naysayers, you know, people that were close to me, and that could have actually brought me down. But I had that really strong dream and that belief that this is what I want to do. And I guess, um, I guess as Tony Robbins says, you know, burn the boats, you know, go to the island and burn the boats. And I think I, in my mind I'd already done that. So I really had that really strong mindset around this dream and what I was going to do. And now looking back on that, that was actually a gift because that was really, that was just giving me some resilience and it made me more determined to just forge ahead and follow that dream and um, and just, you know, believe that I could do it. And then I was more inclined to try and surround myself with more believers than the non-believers. And I also knew that, the you know, those people that said those things to me, they weren't saying it because they they didn't think I'd be any good or they they didn't have belief in me. It was more that it's not something that they would do or that they would want to do. And I understand that now. So I was able to let that go. Oh, fantastic. You see, there's always, you need those people. They now become, you know, the, the, the wind beneath your, your wings. Um, and you not only had that with your mother-in-law or the friend or the other person, you also had it when the business coach said, nah, your business is not sellable. But then you were like, you watch me, you know, and, and I quite like that sort of a comeback story. But here's what I have come to realize about the people around us that, um, you know, seemingly say no or don't because, First of all, you're right. It's probably because they want to protect themselves um, for obviously you not exceeding ahead of them, but they also don't want to then bear the brunt of consoling you if it doesn't work because some people just don't want it like that, all right? And then there's also another thing, and I'm saying this with utmost love and respect. They don't know you as a person who could go and run a business. They know you as that mom who was in despair and just taking walks. And they thought, oh, now, now you're walking. Now you think you can train people. You know what I mean? So we need to really go out and show our loved ones so that they can actually start, um, you know, trusting our path. And so many people come across that and they feel um, dejected or stopped. But it's just because they haven't seen us in that capacity, they don't know who we are. So what made you, you know, just say, you know what, each and every one of you guys is close to me. Um, Yeah, I respect and love you, but I'm going to go after what I want because this came with a big price tag, six figures. Absolutely. You're right. 
look at what I did with that. <laughs> yes. um, I listened to the voice within right. and I trusted it. Yeah, I trusted it and I went with it. It was what I wanted to do. And it just, I guess I just, um, yeah, it just gave me the courage to just push forward. Now, I was terrified. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not ashamed to say that I was terrified because, again, you know, that's something that um, really holds people back. But I want to share that because that is a dream stealer. Mm-hmm. And that fear, it's, it's just something that exists inside your mind. It's only something that exists inside your mind. So when we understand that, that our fears are not real, it's actually just the ego part of the mind trying to protect us. It's our, what I call the safety and security officer in your, in your head, <laughs> trying to say, whoa, 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 hold on. Do you think we're going to be safe here? Um, maybe we should pull back. Maybe we should think about this. But you know what? The best thing is don't think about it. Just trust that initial voice and that initial idea and go with it because once you decide to go with it, you just never know what's going to open up. You know, you've put those intentions out into the universe and it is so amazing what the universe will then co-create with you. Like who would have known that I had would create a business from my garage that ran for 15 years and I had a full, um, a full list of clients and most of those clients they started with me from the beginning or a lot of them started with me from the beginning in those in that first year and they stayed with me for the duration of the business wow there was only a really small percentage of clients who kind of you know came and went and some of them went they'd go away maybe for a couple of years and then they'd come back again it was it was actually such a beautiful thing and It actually, I had built this really lovely community, or I should say my clients built a really lovely community. And I didn't even realise it at first, but then I would see them, um, you know, they would meet up for coffee and um, some of them even went on holidays together. And, um, you know, these beautiful friendships were formed and it was just this community and it really showed me the value of, of building that community. Wow. Because, you know, I think the days are gone of, um, you know, a lot of us don't sort of mingle with our neighbours anymore. You know, that was our community. Um, even family, you know, lots of families spread out. So that community gets spread out as well. So now we need to go to other places to find community. And we do that online a lot. So I've got, um, you know, groups, online groups that, are, you know, that where there's community. Um, but that's that's really important. So that was a really important part of the business was to, you know, have that community and and see the value in that. And, um, and to build on that. Oh, absolutely. See, we're psychologically wired to connect, all right? We, this whole separation or six pixels or six degrees of separation has just been a construct of technology, really, that we have put ourselves apart. We were usually clan people living in caves, and obviously that is what was home for us. That was stasis. All right. Mm -hmm. And when you mentioned that, you know, you were sort of rejected by your loved ones, that's real instinct that would have kicked in for you to be afraid. Because back in the time, if you were rejected by your clan, you would have been thrown out of the cave or whatever community you were in. And you would have been dinner for the saber to tiger. You know what I mean? So even though we don't have that much, you know, scary animals around or things of that nature, but instinctively the lizard brain is still yearning for connection. Now, I really like how you mentioned and, you know, sort of concluded about community because community is what a lot of people really need. And for you to create a business that's profitable and enjoyable, people need to know, like, and trust you. And I think the reason why this was different for you is you didn't get your coaching or your business acumen and everything else from walking through a bed of calls or a weekend seminar at a at a retreat and you came back and you're like yeah I've got a laptop now I'm TikToking no I think it came from the heart and and I think that's what really drew people to you because you didn't do this when you started when you became you know very influential 
I don't think you did it for the for the money first. You just did it because you wanted to make and see that change in yourself. Maybe you can comment on that. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, Prosper, you know, I did the whole cold walking thing and and the weekend seminars. I did do those things, but but like I said in the beginning, you know, you'd come back from those and you'd slot back into life and you're back in your old paradigm because it doesn't change your beliefs and your behaviors and your habits in a weekend or you know in a in a short workshop or seminar it's got to be something that's ongoing and that's why the programs that i have with uh, the people that i work with now we do an initial 8 week step by step program where you know we take them take them through a process um, a very structured process to get them to a place where they are able to instill that long lasting change but then keep them as part of the community and continue working with them so that they're um, so it's all a little bit more ingrained and they learn the skills to keep going with what they've learned so it's it takes them from you know from where they are you know on the trajectory to where they want to be so it's on that putting them on that path to their potential and um, teaching them that you know every new skill that you take on board it's it's just part of your evolution part of your evolution part of your evolution and I actually every time I speak about this it reminds me of um, like a video game so I don't know if um, if you ever played video games I'm not really into them now um, I probably would if I uh, you know if I had had a bit more time for that sort of thing. But I can remember as a child, my younger brother had the little handheld game of Donkey Kong. Have you ever heard of Donkey Kong? Uh, um, and yeah, I think, yeah, it's a, it was pretty popular in its time around the days of the Space Invaders. And, um, and you know, it had the cute little um, gorilla, I think it was. And, you know, you'd play the game and you'd be at a certain level. And you'd go through the game and you'd have to overcome obstacles and, and challenges and, you know, go over and under things and, and um, you know, and really, um, you know, get, get your way through the game to get to the next level. And so you'd work your way through and, you know, be pretty intense at times and you'd, you'd smash that level and then all of a sudden you're at the next level. How good did you feel? Oh, wow. Such a good jumping to that next level. And then, and then the level that you've left, like that's in the past, you've done it, you've conquered it, and then suddenly you're at the next level and then you, and you go from there. And this is, this is you know, similar to that evolution that, um, that you want to ensure that you're going through. Don't keep going back to where, where you were before. You always want to have that mindset that you're moving forward and you're growing and you're flourishing. So, you know, plant the seed and nurture it and have it grow, watch it grow, um, because that's that's how we're meant to operate as human beings. You know, that's what we have the capability of doing. We're not meant to be stuck. And, you know, I've, I've been in that place where you feel stuck. And, and during my personal training business, I had that um, many times. And I, I myself was on that roundabout where I just felt like I was doing, doing, doing. I was doing so much and I was busy. And I was caught up in that busyness, but just going around and around in circles, I wasn't really making the progress all the time that I wanted to make. And, um, and I know that that's a lot of other people in business as well. And that causes stress. And stress is really debilitating, not just in your business life, but your personal life as well. So um, to prevent you from, from being on that stressful roundabout, you really need to um, you know, work on yourself and and know that, uh, you know, do the things that really matter. And you want to do, like in your business, you want to have those income-producing tasks, not just the busy, busy, busy. But if you're stuck in a mindset that of, of being stuck and that you're not, you know, you're not making progress and you're, you're on that roundabout, then you're, you're actually going to keep yourself there by not changing your mindset. And that's that's why I've gone and done all the mindset coaching to take people from that place, out of that stuck place, to a place of confidence, clarity, and also compassion, compassion for yourself. Uh, these, are, these are, you know, three qualities that are going to help um, project you in business. And 
take you away from that mindset of going and doing the, you know, the weekend seminars or the, um, you know, six-week challenges or, you know, whatever it is that's just short-lived but doesn't take you through those levels, doesn't get you on that gamified um, trajectory, you know, like your Donkey Kong game takes you on. Absolutely. See, uh, let me cancel my order for the six-minute abs. Are you sure it doesn't work? <laughs> well, uh, you know what? I've got something better for you. <laughs> let me show you. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, while you're talking, you mentioned some really uncommon strategies. I mean, obviously, for the people that are listening, just so we can close that loop a little bit, um, you, you, you spoke something about identity creation or something along those lines or working on oneself. My, maybe you can share a little bit more about how these strategies, first of all, have impacted your own personal journey and how they can actually benefit others. Yeah. So, one of the um, the phrases that I love and I share with people is one from Neville Goddard, and he says, "There is no one to change but self," and it is so true. So I know that when when you've got problems or challenges or struggles, it's really important to just come back to the self and create some self awareness about where you're at, what's going on for you. Um, what's the messaging that's going on inside your mind, you know, that inner chatter, because that's what is actually ruling your life. So it's the stuff that goes on in your subconscious mind. So we have the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, and the subconscious mind is actually 96% of what you do every day. So your conscious mind only rules about 4%. So you really want to know what's going on in that subconscious mind. So when we have problems, problems and struggles, um, we can look outside and think that it's, you know, other things going on that's affecting us and causing these problems. And, yes, external things do have an influence, but to the degree that it influence us, influences us depends on what's going on with us on the inside. So people will have um, heard of the term triggers, so we get triggered by things externally based on what's going on inside. So you want to work on healing the triggers, for want of a better word, or, um, you know, changing the triggers, uh, extinguishing the triggers, and that's all working on the self. So once you work on the self, um, you change the way that you look at things. And when you change the way that you look at things, the things you look at change. So I think that was a, a Wayne Dyer quote, that one. Absolutely. I love that one. I love that one. Now, you mentioned the eight-week mindset and mental fitness transformation program. How can people get um, started on this uh, eight-weeker? So you can go to my website and contact me through the website or you can email me, leslie, L-E-S-L-E-Y, -E -E at leslieodonoghue.com.au. So either the website or email. And we can set up a strategy call and have a chat and um, have, have a talk about what it is that you want to achieve and how we can fit that into a program that's going to suit you personally. So each of the programs are personally structured um, based on what's going on for you and your business or career, wherever you're at. And, um, yeah, and, and we take it from there. So set up the eight weeks and watch your life change. Oh, that is pretty cool. I'll definitely make sure that I put the links uh, in the show notes uh, below. That way people can maybe make that decision and see if it is uh, well suited for you. Now, You've shared quite a lot with us and this has been remarkable. You know, there's one quote that you mentioned, you know, I think it was Tony Robbins who mentioned about burning the boats. And then from there, I, my heart skipped a little bit because there's a time when you actually were on a boat, 43 foot uh, yacht, um, and you sailed, you know, all the way from Melbourne to Hobart, did that boat end in ashes? Because you, you were very adamant about burning boats <laughs> in your talk there. Uh, no, I think if I had burnt that boat, boat I would have been in a lot of trouble. <laughs> 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 um, 
<laughs> no, it, it's a beautiful boat. There's no way I would have wanted to burn it. Um, <laughs> I got a phone call one day asking if I wanted to be part of a six-person crew uh, mm. sailing this yacht from Melbourne to Hobart for the Australian Wooden Boat Festival that happens down in Hobart every two years. And uh, so this was last year, almost a year ago, February last year. It was a completely random, out of the blue invitation. And um, I kind of was on the other end of the phone, just with my jaw dropped, thinking, I, what, what realm is this that I'm in? It was just, it was kind of a bizarre phone call to receive. And so I had to get myself to Melbourne and I knew nothing, I know nothing about sailing, knew nothing about sailing, didn't know the first thing to do. And, um, but I had this voice inside my head, that little voice again, it said, and it said, just do it. Don't think about it, just do it. And I, and I, I took the leap and I thought, I'm just going to say yes. I, I have got no idea what's in store for me. I don't know what it entails, but I just took this leap of faith and trusted that voice and said yes. So I was the only female on this um, on this boat, and I was with five fantastic guys who were just so inclusive and um, patient and um, just you know generous and and kind in helping me. And at the same time, they just you know they threw me in at the deep end, and I had to do everything that they did. It was a very, very fast learning curve, but it was the most amazing adventure and it really showed me what can happen when you're willing to step outside of your comfort zone and then just trust. Wow. Now, if my phone rings, I'm not going to ignore it because you never know. It could be a yacht sailing in the Bahamas or in Hawaii and that could be my um, you know, story to tell one day. But I quite like that you jumped onto this. It's like jury duty. How do they get a hold of you in the first place? <laughs> you know, is it just yeah. being in the right place or is it the manifestation of things and just putting yourself in alignment to things that could actually, um, you know, shape the course of your life? Because some of these things just happen. I think it was uh, Steve Jobs that says you cannot connect the dots looking forwards, but you could always connect the dots looking backwards. And I always encourage people to pay attention to whatever is happening around them because one day they'll have a good story to tell on the online prosperity show. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It was just, yeah. I think I was just in the right place at the right time. And for whatever reason, you know, maybe this is the co-creation of the universe. Um, knowing things, you know, the universe knows better than me. <laughs> so I just decided to answer the call <laughs> and say right. yes. Fantastic. Now, obviously, people might be watching this and going, ah, you know, maybe she's she's the one who's got the luck of the draw. I can't do all the things that she has done. You know, I, I don't have the time. You haven't seen my kids. You haven't seen my family. You know, everyone has all these excuses. And both you and I know that excuses only sound best to the person that's saying them. Now, you've worked with a whole diverse range of clients in various sort of industries and things of that nature. Mara. Could you tell the person that's watching right now to just rest and calm their farm by sharing a success story that's not of you, but a memorable maybe experience that highlights the impact of the work that you've done, your coaching and mentoring, you know, somebody who's sitting there just thinking, wow, if Leslie wasn't here, this wouldn't be happening. Sure thing. Well, I know all about those excuses, um, but not just from my clients. You know, I've been there myself. You know, through my journey, I've certainly made a lot of excuses. You know, you, you think that these are reasons, um, you know, these really good reasons of why you can't do something. But, you know, if you're really honest with yourself, you're exactly right. They, they are excuses. And they all just come from your fear. It's just from your fear. So it's really you know, kind of natural and, you know, that's the way we are as human beings. But it really does hold you back, keep you stuck and diminish your life experience. So, um, yeah, so to, to give an example, I had a, um, a client who, um, so this is a woman who reached out to me. We'd actually just, um, we just sort of met through a neighbourhood um, 
uh, encounter, I guess you'd say. And then she found out what the, what I did and she went and looked at my website and checked me out and, and contacted me and said, look, I've been offered a, um, a new role in at my work and it's, it's a leadership role. I've never um, been in a leadership position before. But it's, you know, it's really enticing and um, it sounds exciting, better money. The people that I've been working with are great. Like there were so many things about it that she loved, but she said, I'm really, I just don't see myself as a leader. You know, that just was not her identity. So um, she said, can you help me? And, of course, I said yes. And so we started to take her through the eight-week program. So I took her through that eight-week structured program that I start everybody on. And um, slowly but surely she was, um, uh, you know, moving along and making progress. And we were talking a lot about her, um, you know, the changes that she was making in herself and the, the way that she saw herself. So, you know, working on that identity and having... Um, creating a few belief changes, which then was changing her thought process. And she was actually instilling some new habits and behaviours as well. So it, all, it was all sort of falling into line. Uh, but then what happened was her daughter became quite sick. And so, of course, she had to switch her attention to her daughter, um, which, of course, I've, I've got very high family values and that's absolutely, you know, exactly what she would have done but she um it, it caused her to kind of fall off the wagon and then once her um once her daughter was well again so see this was over a few weeks um over, over a few weeks this this period where her daughter was unwell it was quite serious um then when she came back into the um, into the program, she'd actually she'd lost a lot of momentum and lost a lot of confidence, and she had been listening to her family uh, because she was around her family a lot, and unfortunately, um, they were the some of them were the naysayers, the same sort of naysayers that I had when I first started my journey, and it um, and it actually pulled her down for a while, mm. so. We had to do quite a bit of work to, to get her back up. Um, it was almost like she'd gone through her own illness when she um, sh she was there with her daughter. Um, but we, we did the work and and to her credit, she hung in there. And the thing that, that was really good for her, even though she had so much negativity going on, it's almost like she had this new disease in her head. Um, she just kept, she did keep persisting. So we kept her on track and with the persistence and the consistency, two really vital things to take you on that journey and get you to that next level. So she really pushed through. It did take a little bit longer, but it actually made her stronger on the other side. So even though she'd had that adversity and it, you know, kind of stopped her in her tracks and, and, and really pulled her down, it was kind of like a real, real test for her. Um, but to her credit, she, um, you know, she she held on to that belief in herself, sort of pulled herself back up and she was persistent and consistent and she ended up getting there in the end. She went ahead, got the job, took on that leadership role and she's now, from there, she's actually moved to a, a, an even higher level in um, the leadership team and, um, yeah, she's just going from strength to strength. You created a monster. <laughs> a good monster. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on that. And uh, wow, I think that's that's a fantastic story right there because so many people, like we were saying, have all these excuses and it's just, um, yeah, it limits them to go from strength to strength, like you said. And a lot of them are not picking up the call. You know, not necessarily a call to a 43 foot yacht, but the call to action, the call to actually be doing have that life that they so much want to have. Now, this, I can't thank you enough for the time that we've spent on the show today. And um, obviously, you know, your journey just started with a single walk. You know, and you just kept walking and now you walked all the way to Melbourne, back to Tasmania, all the way. It was just a walk in outside your comfort zone. 
So thank you so much for taking that first step. But as we wrap up, can you maybe share a sneak peek into what's next for you? I mean, you've done it all. You sold businesses. You've cracked the six-figure code. You know, your family respects you. Some of us still have to work on that. You have happy clients. You've done the unthinkable. Any exciting projects or endeavors that you've got lined up in the horizon? Uh, absolutely, Prosper. You know, I feel like I've only just started. Wow. I'm still at the beginning. <laughs> uh, no, I have I have absolutely come a long way and uh, I'm really proud of that and I love that I'm able to share that with people. I think one of the things that I really love um, that's been really valuable is that I've made a lot of mistakes along the way and in the past I would have been too scared to share that because I thought that that meant that I wasn't good enough and, you know, all those limiting beliefs that I had that I had to work through. But I love being able to share that with other people because this is what's what helps them to step ahead and step up and, and take themselves to the next level is because we're allowed to make mistakes, we're allowed to fumble, we're allowed to, um, you know, put ourselves out there and, you know, look a bit silly. Um, but as long as we follow that dream and listen to that voice inside our head and answer the call and be willing to take ourselves to the next level. So my goal is actually to help 1 million women. So the majority of my work is with women in business and entrepreneurs, and I want to take them to their next level, put them on their path to their potential because there is too much suffering and it's, it's not necessary. We don't have to suffer. We're not here to suffer. We're here to shine and we're here to live our best life, live a life we love is my motto. Um, and, and that's what I want to do is I want to help people. I want them to see. I want them to be the light in their own life and I want to take them from that mindset mess to bring out their best and to live their dreams and be the shining light for other people and so that they're then able to reach down and pull others up as well. So one million people. Who's going to be the next one? <laughs> Absolutely. And if you're watching right now and if you haven't been moved, I think you need to go seek medical assistance um, because this was one exhilarating show. I can't imagine, you know, we've been here for almost an hour now and I still, I still haven't had enough for you. But I've been told we're running out of tape, so... I'm going to have to conclude the show right now. You know what that means now? You're going to have to come back because I don't think we're done with you, Leslie. I would love to come back, Prosper. It would be my absolute pleasure. If if not, you owe us a book. <laughs> oh, and the book's coming. Don't you worry. Fantastic. So, All right. Publish the Great stuff. So when the pub when the book is published, can we also be one of the stops that you make when you launch this book, right? So we can get to learn more about you and actually, um, yeah, because I think there's just so much more that we we couldn't unravel in, in the one hour that we've been together. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that was an incredible journey that we just embarked on with Leslie um, O'Donoghue because it started with a walk. But we walked onto the wild side <laughs> with this one. So we, we went from uncovering the power within ourselves to actually embracing new adventures. I think Leslie's insights have truly been eye-opening. But hey, if you've missed any part of this enlightening conversation, don't fret. You can actually watch the full episode on our website and be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of these insights um that we are always bringing in with our wonderful guests leslie thank you once again and for those that have watched up until now thank you so much for trusting the process until next time stay inspired and just keep chasing those dreams bye for now